Fractions represent part of a whole. Here we have one whole pizza. Here we have less than one whole pizza. We have to use fractions to represent how much pizza this is. A fraction has a numerator and a denominator. Let's look at that pizza from earlier. The numerator is the number of pieces of pizza we have or the number we're considering. In this case, we have six pieces. The denominator is the total number of pieces. This pizza was cut into eight pieces, so the denominator is eight. This shows six eighths of a pizza. Fractions can represent part of a whole, like in that last example, or they can represent part of a set. Here I have eight whole pizzas and six of them are pepperoni. So I have six eighths pepperoni pizzas. Fractions can be reduced to simplest form. To do this, we find an equivalent fraction with the smallest possible numerator and denominator. We need to find the greatest common factor. That's the largest number that both the numerator and denominator can be divided by evenly. In this case, it's two. Six and eight can both be divided by two evenly without a remainder, so it's the greatest common factor. If we divide them both by two, we will have this fraction in simplest form. Six divided by two is three, and eight divided by two is four. So six eighths is equivalent to three fourths. And if I wanted to write six eighths in simplest form, it would be three fourths. When we look at the pictures, we can see they're the same amount of pizza. It's just cut into different size slices. Fractions are easy to add when they have the same denominators. We simply add the numerators and keep the denominators the same. Let's try adding 3 eighths plus 2 eighths. First, we'll look at it visually. It's like taking the pieces from the 3 eighths pizza and the pieces from the 2 eighths pizza and putting them together. I can see that 3 eighths plus 2 eighths equals 5 eighths. We can use candy hearts to practice writing fractions too. Let's take a look at what fraction of our hearts are white. I have one white candy heart and 12 total candy hearts. So one out of 12 or 1 12th of my candy hearts are white. I also have one yellow candy heart. So 1 12th are yellow and 1 12th are also orange. I have two green candy hearts. So two out of 12 or 2 twelfths of my candy hearts are green. I have three pink, three twelfths are pink, and four twelfths are purple. We can also practice reducing or simplifying fractions using our candy hearts. Those two twelfths green that we looked at earlier, that can be simplified. Two and 12 can both be divided evenly by two. Two twelfths in simplest form is one sixth. Let's look at that visually. If I divide up my candy heart fractions into six equal groups, I can see that one sixth is green. Let's simplify four twelfths. Four and 12 can both be divided by four. Four twelfths in simplest form is one third. If I divide up my candy hearts into three equal groups, I can see that one of the thirds is purple. Let's take a look at our three twelfths pink. Three and 12 can both be divided by three. Three twelfths in simplest form is one fourth. To look at that one visually, we'll have to rearrange our candy hearts. There. Now I can divide up the hearts into four equal groups, and I see that one of those fourths is pink. Let's practice adding fractions using our candy hearts. How many candy hearts are either green or pink? To answer this question, I need to add the green and the pink fractions together. I have two twelfths green and three twelfths pink. 2 twelfths plus 3 twelfths is 5 twelfths. 5 twelfths of my candy hearts are either green or pink.